Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. I want to go over a ton of tips and tricks that I've discovered since I've been using my Oculus Quest. Some have improved my experience, some have been useful tools, and some have kept me safe and hasn't destroyed my Oculus Quest by me being completely stupid. I know many of you are getting an Oculus Quest this holiday season and some of you may have recently just got one as I know a shipment just went out and my Discord's been going crazy. So hopefully you're going to find a lot of these tips and tricks very useful and can help improve your virtual reality experience. So there's so much to go over here, enough chin wagging, let's get started. So starting off this video, it's going to be very, very useful for you to be able to use SideQuest. If you haven't used SideQuest before, this is something I recommend highly. There are a ton of free games available and it allows an incredible suite of tools for you to make use of. So to enable this, I'm going to play a little clip now on how to set it up. It's very, very quick. If you're someone that's already installed SideQuest, I put a timestamp down below so you can just skip this intro and you can just get onto the tips and tricks for you to enjoy. So let's install SideQuest. You just go to this website. I put a link down below in the description. You want to choose one of the three options, Windows, Mac, or Linux, depending on what you're on. That will download SideQuest, and that's the application done. You then need to create an organization. So click the link, and it will take you to a new page. And you need to just create a new organization, put in any old name. Then hit Submit. Then approve the agreement, thanks for your salt, and then wait for the pend. Once that's done, you need to install the drivers. You only need to do this if you're on Windows. So click the link, agree to the agreement, download the drivers. Once they're downloaded, simply just extract them and then follow the file path like I'm doing here. And you want to right click this file and click install. One final thing to do, developer mode. So go to your mobile phone, go to settings, connect to the Oculus headset that you're trying to enable. Go to more settings, developer mode, and then enable it so it's blue. I'm turning it off and then back on again. Next, you must plug in your quest into the computer and unlock the force of developer mode. So the first tip are phone pop-ups, notifications on your mobile device being visible in virtual reality. This has been very helpful for when I've ordered deliveries and I want to play VR. Perhaps a friend has an emergency and wants to get hold of me and I want to play VR. Because it's a very closed off experience, we don't really have access to the outside world when we're in VR because we're immersed in these amazing new worlds. So this is a very useful tool. And how you want to do this is plug your Oculus Quest into the computer. You want to boot up SideQuest and install an app called Notify VR. Then you also want to install the mobile application onto your phone, which is called Notify VR as well, which you can find on the Google Play Store. Put on your headset, go to unknown sources and open Notify VR. You then want to open the mobile app on your phone and click connect. And that's it. It's that simple. You can now set it up. Any notifications that you've set on your mobile device will pop up on your Quest. If you want to configure it, you have to configure it on your mobile phone. And to turn it off, just remove the app. It's easy peasy and it's a very, very useful tool. So some of you know, some of you may not, that the Oculus Quest is running on an Android operating system. And this allows us to install lots of Android apps onto our Oculus Quest for us to enjoy. I've installed things such as Call of Duty Mobile, San Andres, Among Us, Discord, WhatsApp, all of these useful applications that you may want to use in VR just because you love VR, you don't want to take off your headset, you want to stay in there as long as you possibly can. So to do this, you simply go online and download the APK file. You can just use Google to find it, give it a nice easy search. Or if you've downloaded it onto your mobile phone, if you have an Android device, you can actually copy those APK files off your phone and use them here. So all you want to do is open up SideQuest with your headset connected and just simply drag and drop the application into SideQuest and it will install it for you. Now, if you go into your Oculus Quest headset, go to unknown sources, you'll see the application there ready to use. Simply click it and enjoy. Something that I really loved back in the day of my Xbox 360 was the ability to play my own music on my console. In my virtual reality headset, I can't seem to do that. And there was an application called Nullum Music that allowed that, but it seems to have disappeared and I can't seem to find it. But even better, you can actually install Spotify on your Oculus Quest by simply looking for the APK online and dragging and drop it into SideQuest so it installs on your headset. Then when you go to unknown sources and open Spotify, you simply log in and it will start playing all the tunes you want to listen to. And this continues to play whilst you're in the home menu. So when you're browsing the internet, perhaps you've got a browser open and you're doing some work or you're chatting with friends to organize a game, you can carry on listening to your music. When you jump into a game, this music will stop. But then when you come 
back to the home menu, it'll just kick off again exactly where you left off. So really, really great if you want to listen to some tunes and just want to hang out in virtual reality in your home with some of your friends. And speaking of the browser, this is a feature that came a while back, but some of you, if you're new to virtual reality or new to Oculus Quest, you may not know this exists. So if you go to your Oculus default browser, there's actually a plus button above your screen that's in front of you, in front of your browser. And this can open up to three more screens for you to enjoy. So you can have three kind of monitors, browser clients open at one time surrounding you. So one, you can have YouTube, one, you can have sports stats. And on the other screen, you can open something like Twitter. So you can enjoy three browsers that surround you in virtual reality, the ultimate multitasking. So this one is a very, very useful tip. Perhaps you're going from the Oculus Quest 1 to the Oculus Quest 2, and a lot of games, they don't have cloud saves. And frequently, I know it's sad to say, but you may end up in the position where you have to factory reset your Oculus Quest headset. And in doing so, because there aren't cloud saves, you're gonna lose a lot of your game saves and all of your progress in those titles are going to be wiped. So if you find that you're in that situation, simply plug your Oculus Quest into your computer and open up SideQuest. Then go to the application icon, and the top right corner and this will give you a nice list of everything that's installed in your headset. Simply click the cog on the right and select back up. This will download all of your save data and the application data onto your computer. Then what I did is I completely wiped Endspace from the Oculus Quest headset and then re-downloaded it again. And then I went to this restore page, this application page that we were already on. And this time when I clicked the cog, I select restore instead. And what this will do is it will overwrite what's already on my Oculus Quest headset with that backup that we recently created. And therefore my save and my application progress is now going to be on my headset. It's just very, very helpful. And they recently added a button where you can select all so you can back up everything and then restore everything with a simple click of a single button. Sharing content. This is something the VR community do very, very well. Find some amazing kills online, some amazing scenes, some Easter eggs that they may find in game, and they want to share it with the community. Well, there's a few ways you can actually do this on your Oculus Quest headset without leaving virtual reality with a few clicks of a button. So when you have a video or a screenshot that you want to share, if you open up that video or that screenshot in the top right, you should see an arrow. Click that arrow and it will give you sharing options. You can share with a Facebook group, you can share with someone directly as a DM or you can share on your timeline that video. It's that easy. So when you select one of these options, you'll perhaps put a message and then post and it will upload that message and that video to that timeline to a friend or to a specific group, perhaps the Oculus Quest community group. Since this is a Facebook owned device, I know many of you may be worried about privacy because you're gonna have to link your private account now with your gaming account. And that may concern some people, but there are some things you can do about it. So if you go to settings, device, and then privacy, you can actually select some of the permissions and configure the privacy options that are available on the Oculus Quest headset, such as who can see your activity online and who can see your friends list. There are three options available. You can have it private, which is only me. You can do friends of you, or you can make it public. I do recommend making everything private just to be on the safe side. But if you're one of those people that don't really care, or perhaps you do want to share, then you can configure this any which way you want as well. If you're new to the Oculus Quest, you may not know that you have nine virtual environments as it stands to change as your home screen. So you can go to settings, scroll all the way down, there is a virtual environments tab. Here you will see many options for you to select as your home environment. My favorite one is the space station or the kind of cyberpunk looking one, which looks like it's from Blade Runner or the future. And there's also a really helpful one, which is the pass through option. So when you're in the home menu, your actual home environment is your surroundings. That way it's very very easy for you to look around if someone walks in the room, if you want to pick up a drink. Before diving into a game, you can make yourself aware of your surroundings. This is very, very helpful. And if you're new, and if you're new to the quest, you may not have been aware of this. Sometimes when you're playing virtual reality, you may need to answer the door. You may just want to have a sip of a drink or perhaps move something that you've bumped into whilst playing VR. And you don't want to take off your headset. That's annoying. Well, there is a feature available. If you go to settings, experimental features, there is a double tap pass through. This enables you just to double tap the side of your headset and this will activate the pass through camera so you can see what's going on around you. This is incredibly useful and it kind of feels badass when you're just Something that I actually didn't know and discovered very, very recently is you can set a password for your Oculus Quest, a gesture-based password. So if you go to settings, device, there is something called a password pattern. When you select this, it lets you create a gesture-based password for your device. You have to draw some lines on this kind of grid that they give you, and then that becomes your password next time you try to log in. So if you don't want anyone using your headset or you've got something on there, you don't want your family to see, perhaps it's wise doing that. 
This one I really do enjoy because I work on computers all day. That is my job. So I'm looking at computer screens for my work. I'm looking at computer screens when I'm editing videos, when I'm playing virtual reality, when I'm watching TV in my downtime or playing other video games. And it can just become a very strenuous experience on your eyes. So there is a warm lighting feature inside the Oculus Quest. If you go to settings and then go to device, there is something called nighttime lighting. If you select this, it kind of filters out all of the blue light and you get really warm colors. This is great if you have eye strain or playing VR for a very long time, or you're playing at nighttime before you go to bed and you want to be well rested and not wide awake after you've played your experience. This is going to be very, very helpful for that. I really, really love this feature. It's become very useful for me. Another feature which is kind of hidden is the quick snapshot. If you press the home button and then the trigger immediately after, you will take a snapshot of what's on your screen at that time. This is great for capturing those moments that go by really, really quickly and you want to share it with someone. So simply press the home button and the trigger and it will take a snapshot that you can then share with the community later on. If you've recently got an Oculus Quest and it's gonna be this hybrid console for you to play PC VR with and standalone VR with, you don't have to use the link. There is a wireless option available in Virtual Desktop. Virtual Desktop is a paid application that allows you to stream your PC to your VR headset, but it can also be used to play Steam VR games. This feature isn't available by default, so you do have to buy the Virtual Desktop application from the official Oculus Quest store, and then sideload a patch to enable this feature. Simply purchase the game, it's around 15 pound, and then you want to plug your headset into SideQuest and install the Virtual Desktop patch. You also want to download the Virtual Desktop streamer on your computer. So if you go to the virtual desktop website and download for Mac or Windows, depending on what you're using, you'll then have the virtual streamer available, which will be used to connect the headset to the computer to stream virtual reality content. So now when you boot virtual desktop with all of this set up and you've connected to your computer, you can go to games and select any of your Steam VR games. It will boot up and you can enjoy playing wireless PC VR gaming. And it's really, really good. It's the latency is not as bad as you'd expect, but you will require good internet for it. I don't recommend doing it if you've only got a 2.4 gigahertz router but it's a great option if you've got the money spare and don't want to be tied to a wire the whole time so speaking of the oculus link this is a great one you can actually make many many adjustments to the quality of your experience when using the oculus link so if your headset's plugged into the computer, you can go to the Oculus desktop application, go to devices, and then select the Oculus Quest. If you scroll down on the right, there's something called manage graphical preferences. So if you select this, you can change the frame rate you experience in VR, because perhaps you don't have a really high-end computer and you don't want to play 90 hertz, because it'll be slightly more strenuous. And it also has a resolution slider. So again, if your computer's struggling, you can reduce that resolution. Or if you've got a beastly rig, you can whack it up and enjoy more beautiful visuals that if you go to your program files go to oculus go to support then diagnostic tools you can actually change the video bit rate of your oculus link and this makes such a difference if you've got usb3 you can put it up to 500 megabits but i don't recommend that i don't really notice a difference so kind of save the power and go around 350 and your visuals should be much much clearer so if you're using the oculus link and you don't think it looks that great Try adjusting some of these settings and it should improve your experience. This one's a little different. It's actually kind of a cheeky one. So the Oculus Quest, the tracking's really good, but it does have some issues that if it's incredibly bright in your room, the tracking suffers. If it's incredibly dark, the tracking suffers. So you have to find that sweet spot and sometimes it's just not possible. So what you can do is buy an infrared illuminator. This light is invisible to the human eye, but the Oculus Quest cameras can actually detect it. So if you're playing in very low light settings and you have one of these illuminator lights on, your tracking can actually be picked up much, much better. And this way you can enjoy virtual reality experiences without having the light on, which could be too bright, or turning the light off and then you're in a very dark situation. It's just very helpful and the option's there if you're someone that needs it. The Oculus Quest 2 has some IPD problems. You may have already been aware of this, but it's actually set as three tiers. It's no longer a manual slider like it had on the Oculus Quest 1. So we have 58 millimeters, 63 millimeters, and 68 millimeters. If you're like myself, you could fall in between one of those. And if you're not exactly right of your IPD, you can have slightly blurred vision and it's just not perfect. It's just not right. But what people have discovered that if you move the lenses ever so slightly, you can actually set the lenses in between those tiers. So if you're 60 millimeters, or IPD, you can actually move it between the first tier and the second tier with a little, little small adjustment just to get it just right and enjoy a much clearer visual experience. Although if you whack your headset, sometimes it does move and then lock to the other tiers and you'll have to adjust it again. A bit fiddly, but it can be very useful if you're someone that's really, really just 
just fed up with those tier IPDs and you just, you need it right. This one I really like because I'm a gamer. I don't just play virtual reality, I play everything. And what I recently discovered was that you can put the Xbox beta streaming application onto your Oculus Quest because it's in beta on Android devices. And like I said previously, this is an Android operating system. So you can put this Xbox beta onto the Oculus Quest sign in with your Xbox Live subscription and play big Xbox exclusive titles on your Oculus Quest. So if you have a joypad, you can connect it with Bluetooth to your Oculus Quest and use that joypad to play these games that you're playing on your Oculus Quest headset without the need of an Xbox, because this is streaming from the clouds. So you can turn your Oculus Quest headset not only into a portable VR headset, but a portable gaming station as well, which is just brilliant. I think that's a great, great feature. Motion sickness. I have done a dedicated video on this because I know some people dive into virtual reality. They've not done it before. They experience motion sickness and they want to get their virtual reality legs and we do not want to put them off playing virtual reality again. So there are a few things you can do to help with that, such as eating ginger biscuits or drinking ginger tea is supposed to help and ensuring that you have a constant flow of fresh air in the room. Nasty smells can set off that nausea and there are many more things you can do as well. I do have a dedicated video on motion sickness that I will link down below if you're interested in those tips and tricks. So at this point, you've already set up SideQuest and you have a developer account. And this means that you can download the Oculus Developer Hub. And this hub gives you a bunch of additional tools that you can use on your Oculus Quest, such as uh, casting or enabling the Oculus Quest without activating the sensor by putting it up to your face. You can also install APK Falls wirelessly because it's got a wireless ADB function. And there's just lots of features here that you can fiddle around with that you don't normally get for free on the default Oculus Home. So if you download this Oculus application, the developer hub, there might be something there that you find useful. So there are a bunch of casting options available on the Oculus Quest. You can now cast to a Google Chrome device, a smart TV, your mobile phone, but they've also recently added a feature called Oculus Casting, where you on a computer can go to a browser client, I believe Google Chrome and Edge is only supported currently, and go to oculus.com slash casting. And this will allow you to stream your Oculus Quest to your computer with really minimal latency. They've done such a fantastic job with this, but you're going to experience it differently depending on how good your internet is but it is very well implemented. So if you're someone that wants to stream content, you can use this and stream your Oculus Quest to your computer, use OBS to capture it, and then you can stream online. A very, very helpful thing, especially if you've got people over and you can't cast your phone because people can't really see that and you don't have a Google Chrome device or a smart TV, you can use your computer. So this next one is regarding a lens pen. A lens pen is normally used for cameras, for cleaning the lenses, hence the name, but it can also be used for your Oculus Quest. So on one side, it has a brush and this gets rid of small debris that you can get in the crevices of the IPD mechanic and perhaps just around dodgy edges that you can't really reach. And on the other side, it's got a microfiber cloth, a really small one that you can use to clean your lenses to make sure that it hasn't got oils on it, it hasn't got smudges on it. So you have a really clear experience when you put on your headset. It's really, really small, it's very portable, and it's just a useful tool to have and they're incredibly cheap. This way you minimize the risk of when you're cleaning your headset that you're actually just moving oils around or perhaps you're going to scratch it. So you're using a tool that was designed specifically for this function. An obvious one that people seem to do and I'm still guilty of it is putting your quest near a window. If the sun comes up and it's very bright and your light is shining through those lenses, you can damage your screen. So if you want your quest to last, perhaps get a lens cover to protect it so you don't have to worry about that, but you then have to remember to put that in. Just do not put it near a window as you don't want to risk damaging your Oculus Quest. So regarding some accessories that can help with your experience now, one that when I first started virtual reality, I really found it hard to grasp that when I was throwing something, that I don't want to literally throw my remote controller. And something that really helped with this and reduced the risk of me throwing my remote at stuff or hitting things are hand grips. So I've got two hand grips here, one's from ProTube and the other one is from VR Cover. They have very different functions depending on what you require. So the ones from ProTube have much more support. There's a much bigger kind of surface area on the back of your hand. So overall, this one is much more comfortable and it's also got a magnetic tip at the end 
VPN so you can use it for other ProTube devices such as the stock because perhaps you already have some of those accessories or you're thinking about getting some and that might be a good option for you. The other one is VR cover which look a bit more stylish as they've got this nice kind of tag design on them and they're a bit more simplistic. But there's no denying that they do look much much better and much cooler. So this is very helpful to making you feel comfortable in VR and not worried about throwing your remote at stuff and you can just get immersed in the game and not worry about these little things. So in virtual reality you do run the risk of getting so immersed that you start walking towards things that you shouldn't, perhaps you're getting near the TV and breaking it like I did and there are ways to prevent you from doing that, allowing you to stay immersed and not worrying about safety and it's something as simple as buying a floor map. So this one I'm using the Cyber Shoes mat, but I have also in the past when I had a much smaller play space bought something from Ikea for only £6 and this is fantastic. So what it does is you play on this mat and as you're moving away from the area into a kind of the danger zone let's call it, you'll feel a different texture on your feet and you'll know that you're stepping out a safe play space. So this is a very simple thing to do, it's incredibly cheap to get one of those Ikea mats and it's going to save you from smashing anything that you don't want to and just allow you to get immersed because I really hate hated it when I'm just worrying about playing when I'm trying to play. I just want to play virtual reality and get immersed. And the final one is it's important to be hygienic when playing virtual reality because this is the device that you're wearing on your face and if you've got a device to share with the family then it's probably best to get some of these accessories. The first one is a silicone one, a medical grade one, which means that your facial insert isn't going to soak up oils on your face and it's very very easy to take it off wipe it or stick it in with the dishes to get rid of all of those nasty germs. Another one that's a bit more stylish and it also increases the comfort that you're going to experience and it's going to save the Oculus Quest insert from being damaged in case you want to sell your headset at a later date is this VR cover insert which has these nice plush extra foamy bits. These ones come with their own insert and these white foamy parts simply velcro on top so if you want to take it off and swap them out because you get a pair with the set you can simply just pull it off and swap it out and let someone else use the virtual reality headset and then you're not going to be swapping germs, especially during this season. Well, there's my tips and tricks for the Oculus Quest. I hope there's something there that was new that you didn't know or there's something there that you want to go and try. And if you're new to virtual reality, there's tons of stuff here for you to experiment with and enjoy your new VR headset. Please subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos coming out all the time, games, news and reviews. So thanks for watching to the end. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.